page, and I'm just going, uh, uh, don't know about that. That just doesn't look right to me. And then I saw the Lutheran priest walk in the aisle reading out of a prayer book, and I'm going, what, do you not know how to pray? But he basically he was reciting an invocation. He was invoking his God. And then he walks up on the stage facing the giant 10-foot-tall Jesus, and he's bowing and reading the prayer, and I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm out, I'm done, this is it. I didn't get up and walk out, but I, it, it, I got it. I got it. God said, don't do that. And I guarantee you, in that church, there was a God who was part of that idol, part of it guarantee you. And it was not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because God specifically said, I will have no part in those idols. Don't carve an image of me, because you've never seen me. Deuteronomy 4, 28, and there, there you shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. They can't do what God does. Deuteronomy 8:19 and it shall be if thou do all if thou do it all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them I testify against you this day that ye shall utterly ye shall surely perish That's what the Bible says walking after other gods serving them worshiping other gods Deuteronomy 10:17 the Lord your God is a God of gods a God big G of little g gods and a Lord, uh, a Lord, capital big L, of little L, lords. A great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. Aren't you glad that when God decides to save people, it's not based on who they are, what they've done, where they've been, or how much money they have? I'm glad. That's what makes him above the other gods. He is the God of gods. They do what he says. He doesn't do what they say. That's ridiculous. And you tell your charismaniac friends that that is an absolute ridiculous doctrine that they have. It's unbiblical. It's unsupported. God, the most high God, is in charge of all the little gods. Deuteronomy 32, verse 16, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. And I want you to, here it is. In fact, I want you to write this down. Deuteronomy 32, 16, and 17, I want you to turn there in your Bible. I want you to underline it because right here, the Bible is going to identify these false little g gods. It's going to identify them for you. Are you ready? And the book of Enoch is wrong. And anybody who has read the book of Enoch and suggests, oh, Pastor Mike, have you read the book of Enoch? You've got to really read the book of Enoch because so-and-so wrote books and there, there's other people talking about the Nephilim and they all read the book of Enoch and they're getting things from the book of Enoch. And I just decided to do three DVDs on the giants and never, ever, ever quote from the book of Enoch one time. Not once. Um... So the book of Enoch is wrong. You're going to have to deal with that. I know it's going to be hard, but just deal with it. It's not in your Bible. Deuteronomy 32, 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Here it is, verse 17. They sacrificed, this is Deuteronomy 32. They sacrificed unto devils. Not to God, big G, to God's little G, whom they knew not to new, here it is, to new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. Notice what direction they came from, by the way. And here in verse 17, it tells you what devils are. What are they? Little G gods. Now, I can say that not all, not all of the, let's see, the angelic realm are devils, okay? But they are little g gods, and I'm going to show you that from Scripture. Uh, so now you have these gods, you have devils defined. Devils are not, they are not the disembodied souls of the giants, 
that is spread around like peanut butter all over the Internet, and everybody's just eating it up. Oh, I know what devils are. I read the book of Enoch. Yeah, but you didn't read the Bible. That's your problem. You spent all this time. You th Can I tell a little secret about what Mike Hoggard, what kind of rat bag, dirty, scumbag preacher I used to be? I used to get all these books on prophecy. And you know what I would do? I would get like, I, I remember I bought a Grant Jeffries book, okay? And I'm looking and I'm reading everything that Grant Jeffries says. And this is before my King James experience. And every place where Grant Jeffries would, he'd be talking about, oh, this is going on in Israel, and this is going on here, and such and such said this. And I remember one book he was writing about the identity of the Antichrist, and he was quoting early church fathers, and he was quoting this book, and he was quoting this book, and this ancient text, and this and that over here. And I was reading all of it. And when he got to the scripture, you know what I would do? You know what this real spiritual holy person, Mike Hoggard, would do? I'd skip over the scripture because I wanted to know what Grant Jeffries said. And people have pe – prophecy people, anti-New World Order people, Nephilim people decided that they, they knew it all from the Bible. And the, uh, that's old. That's <laughs> – we haven't found anything in there that really matters. So they abandoned it, and they walked after these other books written by who knows. And I'm just telling you, the, the King James Bible will tell you who these devils are. They are not the disembodied souls of the giants. They are, they are fallen evil angels. You know what? I keep saying that, and I, I'm going to give you the verse. Um, let me pull up my quick verse here. E E V I L angels. Psalm 78, 49, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Evil angels. There were bad guys. You remember uh, when Ahab wanted to uh, hear from the prophets about going to war? And the, the, a real prophet showed up and said, let me tell you what I saw. I saw God in heaven, and he's going, who, who, who can I pick to uh, go down and have Ahab killed in battle? And uh, this angel, this spirit, said, oh, pick me, pick me. God said, how are you going to do it? And he said, I'm going to go down and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of Ahab's prophets. And he fell hook, line, and seeker for it. All the way. Took the bait. God is their God of these, even the evil angels. I mentioned last night the Passover. Uh, and I had talked about, somebody asked the question Tuesday about the death angel. And I don't really see that in Scripture. I see the destroyer. And God withheld the destroyer. In fact, God created the destroyer. God created the destroyer to look for the firstborn of both man and beast. And if he sees the blood, ah, I can't go over there. God created him that way. God's in charge of everything and everybody all the time. God is in charge. I can sleep at night now. Anyway, that's your definition of, of who some of these uh, gods are, little g. Joshua 24, 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. They were a, are you Are you getting this? If these gods, if these devils were the disembodied souls of the giants, how did they show up before the flood? These gods were around. They were evil before the flood. Your fathers served them on the other side of the flood, which means prior to the days of Noah, they were serving these same gods, same ones. Now they're serving them all over again, and that which was is that which is shall be. They're going to be serving them again, by the way. And in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it, and by the way, just study Egyptology. Study Egyptian mythology, Osiris and Isis and Horus and all of these. These are the gods that God is referring to here that were on the other side of the flood. 
the gods of Atlantis, if you want to call it that. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. This is, what, this is in the direct context of what he's talking about. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my, you all know this part, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It was in the direct context of serving these devils, these evil angels, that had been around even before the flood. They didn't get destroyed in the flood. Uh, Judges chapter 2, verse 3, Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but ye shall be, or they shall be as thorns. <laughs> Here we go. They shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. What did Paul have in his flesh? He has a, a thorn. And what did he, how did he describe it? a messenger of Satan, an angel, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. The thorns were these gods. There was a god, an evil angel, a thorn, a messenger of Satan that buffeted Paul every day. I've got one of those myself, a couple of them. So do you. So do you. But you need to remember that the thorn that Paul had was given to him so that God's grace could be an evidence in his life. Judges 2.17, And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a-whoring after other gods. They can be whored with. And bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. Judges 10, verse 6, And the children of Israel did evil in the, again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served not him. One God or many gods. And when you serve many gods, they're, they're stars. That means you're in darkness. When you serve the one true God, you're in that's the that's the Son, capital S U N of righteousness, and that's Jesus Christ and you're a child of the day. And that day will not overtake you as a thief, by the way. Um first Samuel four eight. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods, capital G. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Who is he talking about there? Who's he talking about? It was the Philistines, I think, if I, if I remember right. Philip, 1 Samuel 4, that would be the Philistines. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? Capital G, your King James translators put a capital G there. Why? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Capital G, gods, plural. How is that possible? For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let's believe the Bible. Oh, let's see here. First Samuel twenty-eight thirteen. And the king said unto her, be not afraid, for what's all? Oh, listen to this now. For what sawest thou? And the woman saw, said unto Saul, listen, listen, this is, this is Endora, the witch of Endor. And when a spirit was conjured, it was familiar to Saul because it looked like Samuel. Notice what the Endora said. I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Do you know what's going to happen in Revelation chapter 9? The fifth trumpet is going to sound... And the gods are going to ascend.